Uh, welcome to Think Tank with Scott and Will. I'm Scott. And I'm Will. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, free will. So uh, we're just going to get straight into it. Sounds good to me. Okay, so uh, free will. Uh, does, it, is it, does it exist? Scott, your opinion. <sighs> not really. Okay. If you want to give me a yay or nay, I'd say no. Free yeah. will does not exist. Um, I, I notice that you're very uh, 50-50 on the subjects. Uh, can I elaborate? Oh, I just think it's a slight grey area. Honestly, yeah. I mean, yeah, well, of course, yeah. Well, you know, without going into all the details, which we'll be doing a bit later, it's true. Let's go into the details. Oh, it's done. <laughs> um, yeah, the thing about free will, okay, let's say a situation arises, okay, for you to have, we're going to talk complete and total free will, you're able to do absolutely anything. Now, you appear like you're able to do absolutely anything. You know, if something happens, let's say, you know, someone offers you a refund, you can take it, you could not take it. As a silly example, but well, here's a better example. You're okay. driving down the street. You come to a roundabout. You can go left, you can go right, you can go ahead, or you can even turn around and come all the way back. Yeah. Hmm. Um, but obviously, you can't go up in the air. You can't go underground, or you can't choose. You know, well, I suppose you can choose to drive along the sidewalk and run everybody down. Yeah, sure. You can just drive into the shop front on the corner. Yeah, but you can't. You can't just get up and fly. So uh, the, the point that I'm trying to get at here is, as far as free will is concerned, you're already constrained by what you want to do and what you're able to well, do in the situation. Free will would be the, the option to do any option that's possible. I mean, let's say you're driving this car, you can't decide to, actually, I'd like to be the sun now and have Earth rotate around me. That'd be good. You know, you can't, <laughs> can't have that as an option. But the idea of free will is, okay, here's a situation, I'm able to do anything. Make any choice. Any choice. Of yeah. that situation. No, any choice. Yeah. But for you to have total free will of that choice, for you to be able to do any choice, you know, make any choice. Yeah. I mean, you're molded by factors before this. Who you are as a person, how you grew up, your parents were, what the road rules are, what kind of car you're driving. Are you able to turn left? Are you able to turn right? I mean, it's not just a mechanical decision. It's you're able to make any decision. But you don't. Don't forget the ego. The yeah, ego, of yeah. free will is, is very well tied up. Mm, absolutely. But what it is, is you've got all these previous situations that have molded your current decision. Absolutely. So let's say, oh, you know, I'd like to go on the sidewalk, but I don't because there's a police officer there. <laughs> or I'm, I thought I'm last time I drove on the sidewalk, they locked me up for two years because I'm a lunatic. <laughs> so they don't do it. But all these previous decisions, previous decisions, okay, well, for me to go left on on the side of the road, there needs to be a road. So someone needs to have made a decision to build that road when to make that decision. So basically, we're getting it as a bit of a silly example, I think. But for you to make a free, a conscious free choice of absolutely anything, you need to be in control entirely of the situation. You could go, okay, I'm going left. But no, there is no left. There's a building there. Or there's a car there, or there's a person there, or yeah. there's a bridge. Or someone there, just goes, right? no, you can't go left. I'm in your way now. I want to be a jerk. Yeah. For you to be completely free to make any decision, you have to be in control of all the factors. But you're not ever in, in control of any situation, arguably. No, no. You you don't just appear out of nowhere and go, okay, I'm free to do anything. You're bound up in the events. You're arriving. You're almost like a bystander to this greater situation. You're driving your car. Everyone else is driving in their cars. They're reacting to you. You're reacting to them. You're not... There at the start. Well, it, it comes back to the ego because each person is the most important person in their universe. And the, when I say universe, I mean their view of the world. Mm. That We talked a, a lot about this in racism and morality, our very, very mm. early mm. videos. But it's like, yeah, this guy cut me off. Me, I deserve better. This, me, 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 me. You know, the ego is very tied up. I'm important. Mm. But you're just some dude at a, at a roundabout. Yeah. You know, <laughs> the, the, the decision, it's not important. You're not important. Nothing that you ever make or do will be important. You're just a mm. speck of dust. Yeah. So I mean, ultimately, your ability to affect the world is constrained by everyone else, by everyone's previous choices. I mean, to go back to the original, as far as I can recall, the original idea was basically, okay, there's no such thing as free will because there's a God. There's that, use that, let's use that as an example. That's okay. interesting. Now... Let's use it. Let's you can pick any particular god, any religious mythos. Whatever. Let's just assume 100% there's a god. 
Hard and bit. there's no free will, yeah. will because of it, right? Because he makes the decisions. That's it. That's it. It's okay. You're free to do anything now, you know, but you're not because this situation happened before that that affects this current decision. Before that was a decision that made that ah, so now effect we're getting into on that determinism. decision. So there's all these previous decisions that mold the current situation. Now, you wouldn't even be driving a car if 100 years ago someone didn't design a car. Exactly. You wouldn't be there at that particular time in 25 years ago. Your parents didn't decide to make love and you weren't the first firm to make it there. But that's... Well, yeah, yeah, agreed. You don't but appear fully formed. I just like to clarify quickly for people listening. Uh, we're actually starting to talk about uh, something called determinism now. Yeah. Virtually the idea behind it, well, my understanding, you can correct me or interject yeah, if sure. I get off. Um, so you make a decision, but that decision was affected by a cause. And that cause may exactly. be, you know, another decision that you made. But that decision that that cause was affected by an effect which was caused by a cause mm -hmm. so eventually you've got a whole line of this cause is affected by this effect which is caused by this cause which is caused by this effect and it keeps going down and down and down and down until eventually you come down to a situation where you have little control or even no control <clears throat> and, That's it. and you can debate this as, as long as you want but eventually, you're going to come back to the day that you were born. Yeah. You didn't decide where you were born. You didn't decide how you were born. Yeah. You didn't go, okay, I'm here at the start of the universe. I'd like to be born on this date to this parents, and I want to pick these parents and their parents and their parents. Yeah, exactly. At the end of the day, you're reacting. Everything you do, no matter how in control of the situation you're in, is molded by events that happened before you that you had no control over. Yeah, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you're, you're Asian, whether you're um, tall, whether you're short. Yeah. You're going to be exposed in something easily, definitely. These factors arguably. are outside of your control. The way your brain works is outside of your control. Yeah. But the, the original... what about the first, you know, five years of your life? Everything yeah. is outside your control. Everything is done for you. You're exposed to to things that are either socially acceptable or socially unacceptable, depending on your culture. That's it. And like again, go back to our earlier videos. We talked about cannibalism and morality. How in some cultures, you know, eating your deceased was perfectly fine, That's but it. over here, you know, it's it's not. So you, you've been exposed. They they've been exposed to these ideas. Where it's like, well, Uncle Jeff died. I'm gonna have to eat his leg, mm. but that's totally fine. That's this is a free will decision that I make because I have no problem with it. Mm. But you've been exposed to these things so early in your life that you have no control whether you're fine with it or not, mm. unless you start making, you know, epicurean. <laughs> Um, um, decision making processes where you're trying to change your core belief systems mm. but but even then you're yeah. molded by situations that say I need to change my core belief systems in, as opposed to just <laughs> having other ones I mean ultimately no matter what situation you are in you're reacting to a circumstance yeah even if you're just reacting to your prior circumstances that led, led you to this decision to make some circumstance I mean the idea w which was okay if there's a god free will is false because you go back into the causes, and Fine eventually the first one is God created the universe Boom. and decided, <laughs> okay, I'm not going to affect the free will of man. I'm going to have no effect on their decisions. But he still made... He made the choice not to make a decision. Exactly. Which is which is still at the same thing, a decision. Yeah, that's which it. Is a cause. Which he is decided not, he's decided that the first cause was to not impact on you, I think which we, is a cause. I that's think we might cause. have accidentally just debunked Christianity. Accidentally. Well, there is no, <laughs> if there's a God, there is no free will yeah. because he decided that he wasn't he, going to mess with your free will. Well, yeah, he made a decision that in turn affected the decisions that you're going to make. So he's saying, yeah, I'm not going to affect your free will, but that in, its, in itself affects mm. your decision-making process. Now, here's the way it goes. Okay? If God is omnipotent, he knows the way every decision is going to turn out ever, the reaction to this, your situation exactly right now, Will? Yeah. God decided... Not to do anything about. Could have. What, did. What a douche. Could have, but did. I could have had double Ds. That's it, man. That's <laughs> it. Could have had a, you could have had a Rolls Royce Roadster or something like that. Man. Tell you what, I'm, I'm bitching at God right now. Yeah. <laughs> the, the direct react result of God's decision to not give you a Roadster means you don't have a Roadster. <laughs> <laughs> that is. Probably the most sound argument against uh, against me not having a roadster I've ever heard. 
But yeah, the idea of free will is you're basically able to make any decision you want at any time, but you're not. You're molded by previous situations. You're just yeah. molded. You're arriving as a reaction. You uh, react yeah. to everything. So I want to go into yeah. uh, this a little bit more because um, on a base level, determinism talks about the absence of free will. Hmm. But, like, completely. Well, I mean, in the give, regards Give a of, quick rundown of determinism. Okay, well, well determinism, uh, in a very base level, for... Uh, I'm gonna. I've made the decision to talk about this mm -hmm. because this has affected me, and that affected me because this happened, and it goes all the way back. I have no choice. Well, mm. I seemingly have all the choices. I'm like, well, I could choose to do this, or I could choose to do that, but it's all pre-planned for me through the decisions I've already made. So you have no decision-making process. Yeah. So really, so you're sort of as all these previous situations and circumstances have imposed themselves on you. Yeah. Your decision, while well, seemingly open, is pushed into this tunnel of yeah, choice. Yeah, a tunnel of it's one the choice. the illusion of choice. Yeah. So even you thinking about which decision to make, you're already going to go with that decision because mm. of the effects of your life it's had on you. Mm. So you'll be sitting there thinking, well, if I'm sitting here considering this or that, then clearly I have free will. But the decision's already been made for you, by you. That's it. Yeah. You've already reacted to the situation of not of your making, by decisions that you have made previously that one of you making. Mm. That's mean, it, that's it, yeah. You're, the illusion is you're the master of your own destiny. You can do whatever you want. I mean, let's say you're completely insane and instead of doing the regular, sane, normal thing, you just do something completely wacko. Like someone goes to shake your hand, so you so do a handstand and jump off a bridge, <laughs> you know. I mean, your decision to do that was caused by the fact you're insane, which is a chemical imbalance in your brain. And that would be a spontaneous thing. Yeah. Now, I think, Mark, did Mark Rowlands talk about this a little bit? Yeah, Mark Rowlands did cover this, where it's basically like, oh, okay, I can choose to do anything because there's some counterclaim to it that basically says, but I can just do something completely spontaneous. But even then, you're slightly where, where's the source, though? Yeah, you're, that's it. It doesn't appear out of nowhere. You don't just go, hang on, yeah. I'm going to make a decision completely independent. It would say, okay, um, I'm going to see this. My brain is going to think about it. My body's going to react to it. It's like you would have, you would have a date with his example. I believe was a date with a pretty lady. You're having a chat to her, and your arm out of nowhere it's for no yeah. reason Punches slaps her in the face, yeah. and it's like that had nothing to do with me. Well, it kind of did, but um, it doesn't. That doesn't happen. Well, yeah, well, yeah, because if just, it does happen, it's, just it's a, a some, it's, it's a some subconscious maladaption thing. in your own brain. Yeah. But even on that level, mm -hmm. didn't they do studies on? Rats or mice. No, this was people. This was a people. Well, so it was no people where the decision <laughs> was made in the brain before the action happened. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Basically, it's like, okay, let's say randomly for no reason, don't even think about it, press this button. At any, given at any time. point, anyone, press this button. The decision to make, they thought, okay, as soon as they thought they were going to press the button, they pressed the button. But the, the, the basically the brain waves and the sort of um, it, electrical impulses in the brain happened two seconds before they spontaneously apparently thought they should pe press this button. Yeah. That's amazing. So the decision has already been made before you even think about it consciously, before you even move your limbs. It's, it's in two seconds, yeah. like, things happen in an instant, mm -hmm. you know? But obviously that lapse in, in what you're thinking about and what you're doing, obviously mm -hmm. we, we miss out on that in a big way. Yeah. There are no spontaneous decisions. They are all a reaction to something. But um, as far as, like, mm -hmm. I, I, I like to think about pre-existing philosophical ideas and then because some of them I don't agree with yeah. like Plato's world of forms is one that I don't completely agree with yeah well judging by the yeah I dare say that you I agree mean, with me but again let's not get too off topic I'll but just sum up I'll just sum up in about 10 seconds the um, Plato's world of forms basically he's saying for everything let's say beauty for example okay there are things that are more beautiful less beautiful but there is some archetypical ultimate beauty that says, okay, this is where beauty originates from. Let's say so there's it, an archetypical of seven. Yeah. Well, another good way of putting it is you can draw a circle mm. and that circle can be shitty or really, really good. Mm. The better that the circle is, the closer it associates with the form of a circle. Yeah, and this perfect. circle cannot exist in our universe because it is too perfect to understand or comprehend. Mm. So it exists in something called the world of forms mm. where only the form of each thing exists. Mm. But, you know, uh, I think you were, uh, we got the, like Mark Rowland's debunked it. Um, mm. 
how can you how can that be a perfect thing if there's nothing else to compare it to that's it you you've never there's no evidence of it you've never seen it you never touch it you can't see or touch it i mean let, let's give a perfectly good example i, I believe mike rollins covered this okay well now this perfect world of forms was out there somewhere and only through Plato's teachings, which you could pay for at his school, <laughs> he would be able to show you how to access this world of forms. Plato's a dick. <laughs> Man, you got to get paid. <laughs> I, I reckon Plato was wrong about a lot of things. But um, the point I was making was there's some philosophical ideas that I agree with. Yeah. There's some that I don't agree with. And there's some that I partially agree with. And I partially agree with this world of forms for the subject of thinking that it's an interesting thought process that can't be taken too literally. Mm. The same way I think of determinism, I think it's a good idea, but I've added a little bit more onto it. Mm. I've been thinking, you know. Sure. And, well, lay, it, lay it on me, Will. Well, it's, it touches on chaos theory, which I'll talk about in the next, <laughs> next video. Yep. But virtually, you come to an, a, an impasse. You come to a decision-making process. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, the effects of determinism are still there. Yes, I've been affected by previous decision-making processes. So it limits my... Like, if you can come to the roundabout of decision-making, I can go left, right, um, straight or back. But due to the effects that I've had, I've been experienced to and the causes or what I've been influenced by, mm -hmm. I'll only... <clears throat> instead of choosing, you know, left, right, straight or back, I might only be limited to left or straight. Mm -hmm. You know? It, it doesn't narrow your decision making process down to this is this is predetermined. This is well, that's what determinism is. It's completely pre predetermined. Mm. But the idea is well, because I've been influenced by things, I have a very I have a smaller range of what I can and will and won't do. That's it in any <clears throat> given situation. So free will is like well, you, again, it's not free will. It's limited will. Yeah, but that's that's exactly it. Yeah. I mean, you can't, let's say, okay, let's go the roundabout. No, actually, I don't want to be in this car. I'm suddenly an angel. Yeah. Well, that's just... Funny. I'm going to just raid the moon for, for a while. Raid I mean, the moon. Just give a stupid example. Get some cheese. But, but um, yeah, that's it. You're constrained by your own beliefs. You're constrained by your experiences, the lessons you have learned. But that doesn't... That means you basically just can't, you know, independent of everything, make a completely free choice that is free of all the information you've seen and are affected by it anytime. Mm. It doesn't happen like that. You know, you're, you're constrained by it, all these things. You're part of the world. You're not independent. Of it. So therefore, free will isn't, isn't real. But that doesn't mean we can't change our circumstances. Ooh, that, yeah. that doesn't yeah. mean we're going to pick one, one exact. Everyone's going it's to pick the same thing. It's not predetermined for us, yeah. Yeah. It, it, well, I believe it is predetermined, but we don't have to, we don't pick the same thing based upon who we are. There is, um, there is one thing uh, that can help you understand the idea a little bit more. If you've ever come to a decision, uh, like uh, just say that you've, you've experienced a few couple of things in your life. Mm. You, you come to a decision-making process like, okay, I can do this. I can do A, B, or C. But mm. I'm definitely not going to do C because I've experienced that before and that's crazy. Yeah, that's or, it. I probably <clears throat> won't do B because whatever. You know? mm. Or like, um, or, or yeah, A. I've I've done A before, and I know A works well. Mm. You know, you can you can see here how the decision making process has been affected by previous things that you've experienced. You've been influenced. That's it. Yeah. That's it. So I mean, but everyone is influenced has been influenced from different things. You know what I mean? Everyone's current path that led them to this event is different. You know, they grew up in a different place. They had different experiences. They've thought different things. So everyone's reaction to something might be completely different. I mean, a lot of people will veer on the safe side and, okay, someone, some crazy dude in the center has just shot a gun in the air, so I'm going to duck. But yeah, some well, yeah. people are like, well, I was in the military for five years. I'm going to just bum rush this guy. <laughs> you know, I've got a kid. I'm going to dive on the kid, you know? Like, everyone's circumstance is different, so everyone's reaction is going to be at least slightly different. I mean... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That, that's the thing. Like, again, like you were saying... Everyone's been influenced by different things in their life. Mm. You know, if that dude in the military hadn't gone to the military, he wouldn't have bum, bum rushed him. That's it. But if he, he if his old granddad Bill hadn't been the Red Baron, 
Mm. he wouldn't have made the decision to join the military. <laughs> and maybe his great granddaddy, the Red Baron, wouldn't have decided to become a kick ass pilot. If... Best biplane fighter of World War One. Red Baron was a badass. Was and bad. a Baron, too. Well, actually, actually, a Baron. I thought it was just a funny name that they no, gave no, him. he was some badass Baron with oh, like so not... 50, 60 something kills. So he's not like the Colonel, he's an actual Baron, not like a He's fake a Colonel. German Baron, badass World War One biplane fighter. I think he shot down like 160 planes or something. Oh, I think it's at least 60, 70, but think about it. You've got a crappy biplane. From like but World even then, sixty, seventy planes in a crappy biplane is pretty seriously good effort. I mean, think about it. Okay, you came, you have a crappy biplane from World War One. This thing's like sticks in a V four <laughs> engine, <laughs> and you shot down seventy other poor sods in the rain, in the storms, good weather, it's bad a, weather. It's an open cockpit. Yeah. So if it's raining, you're gonna you're gonna go think, swimming. Think the guys with the mustache with the big aviator goggles. That guy shot down seventy other ones of those without being shot down. Yeah. And even when he got shot down, they found the plane. Did they find him, though? I don't know. I think he lived. <laughs> this guy's a bit... Anyway, um, yeah, so the Red Baron might not have become the Red Baron if his great-granddaddy wasn't... I- I'm-, I'm running out of historical... Gen- Genghis Khan. Oh, obviously, there's a little bit of a time lapse here. I want to meet Bill. This guy's a badass. <laughs> yeah. He's got yeah. the best grandparents ever. Yeah, exactly. You know, Genghis Khan, Red Baron... <laughs> You know, they happened to live for a couple of hundred thousand years, or a couple of thousand, hundred years, you know. Well, I, but, um, I think what we was trying to say here is basically that no matter where you are in your life, your decisions aren't made independent of everything that has gone before. That's a good way of putting it. It doesn't happen. Yeah. It, it, there's a big stream of events and you've, you're reacting to these previous events. I saw a Facebook status a couple of months back. I was talking about free will or something like that. And mm-hmm. I, I did mention this briefly. A lot of people got offended. A lot of people got really unhappy about it. And I think that's the, uh, the, the, the relationship that we have with our ego. I can't handle not being in complete control of my situation. That's it. I don't want to feel like I'm constrained. But that's your ego getting in the way. I mean, just because you don't have free will doesn't mean you can't live a long, fulfilling life. Well, doesn't mean you can't be heroic. doesn't mean you can't make $10 million. Well, look, if, if a guy with a gun came in here, would you bum rush him? Would that be your first reaction? I don't know. You, well, I, 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 I've I, never I, been in that situation. I, 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 don't I, don't, I don't know either. But let's just say that we don't. I think, honestly, unless I had a damn good reason that I have no thinking of what that would be, I would probably just duck and kill him. Yeah, or you'd talk to the guy and be like, what the fuck are you doing in my house with a gun? Oh, if he was in my house, that's different. He's getting bum rushed. <laughs> I want my stuff. <laughs> 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 of his staff ranks higher on your <laughs> list of values than living. But, um, well, yeah, he's in my house. Yeah, it, doesn't sound, it doesn't spell very good for me anyway. I might as well not get shot at. <laughs> but, um, you know, you're not in control of that situation. So oh. why can't you just bite down the bullet and just admit that you're not in control of many situations because you've been influenced to think certain things? Well, I think, I think it depends how you look at it. I mean, you can look at it either from the ego's perspective, which is basically... Um, you've been, you know, you're here and you don't get a choice. You're molded by that and that's all, it's, all it is, you yeah. know. You think, is, I'm not going to be a hero. I'm not special. Don't, don't think of it that way. I reckon the best way to do it is go, okay, I am here because of a great many events, okay? Oh, yeah. I'm here because Earth decided to be able to support life. I'm here because well, if humanity yeah. kicked ass and got us to this space. I'm here because out of t- millions and millions of sperm, I was the one that got there first. Still, you got to think, man. Like... Me, me being alive is a great... No, it is. Is a great... Like, the chances of you being alive are so infinitesimally small. You, individual, so infinitesimally small. But yet, here you are in a bunch of situations, and you have a chance to really get out there, change as much as you can, and be the best person you can be. You know, you get a hand in life, and you just... Play that hand as hard as you can and you cheat as hard as you can <laughs> after that and be a badass. I think that's the only way you can do that. Well, yeah, and, and a lot of people don't think about how fragile life really is until they're forced to question how fragile life really is. You know, mm. when somebody close to you dies, you start thinking, shit, you know, like Bill just got hit by a meteor. Yeah. Holy, holy living shit. There's bill, Bill's all over the place, you know. Mm. But that could happen to any one of us at any given time. Mm. You know, uh, you, you could, like, you walk out on the street, there is 
big heavy boxes made of metal on wheels going around at like 100 k's an hour yeah <clears throat> you know at, at any given moment some retard could be looking at nudes of his girlfriend on his phone while he's driving steer the car into you and, and splatter you into four million pieces you yeah. know like, when you think about it it's not that unlikely that it would happen to you hey well there's almost nothing you can do about it yeah you can't prepare for some guy who's running you over on the side of the road. Yeah, you know, accidents happen, you know, and the gas main could explode. You could be struck by lightning. You could go at any given time. Mm. So not only do you have like a one in like, what is it? How many sperms you get in one? A load. I mean, millions and millions. <laughs> millions and millions, like 36 million. You have one in 36 million chances of being you and you're you. Yeah, and that's independent of all these previous yeah, choices, exactly. which said we were on this planet and humanity survived. And, and if, the, if the Earth was one kilometer further away from the sun, we would freeze to death. If it was one kilometer closer to the sun, we would burn to death. No, no, that's bullcrap. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a variation on that I like, where it's basically got the, oh, if, you know, the world was seven Ks, sorry, seven meters closer to the sun, we'd burn to death. And it's got a guy standing on a ladder and his head catches fire. And he's oh, like, oh, that's lame. <laughs> but still, but no, you, that's bullcrap. But you've got to think about that would change our gravitational rotation. Yeah, we're lucky to be in a habitable zone for planets our size that don't get eaten by Jupiter or sucked into well, the sun. Well, yeah. We're lucky know? to be not in the dead area. <laughs> we're in a small livable area <laughs> and humanity came apart and your grandfather, Bill, was alive. <laughs> grandfather Bill is fucking Yeah, man. and he met Grandma Gertrude or whatever you want to call it. Grandma and then it was your dad. And your dad on this particular time gave you one in thirty six million dollar chance. Once in thirty six million chance. And here you are. And I mean you can't control accidents, you can't do that. But you can I mean think of the small chance you are who you are as an individual. Yeah, there absolutely. will never be a you again. Plus there was never these, a you before yeah. and will never be a you again. And now if get you out the, there and kick some ass. Yeah, but that's absolutely. just. You know, that's but if the you way add I all the free it. accidents on top of this thirty-six million, you have like a one in a hundred million chances of you being you, and you are you. Yeah, you want you win, you want that. That's now, it. I go out in the street every day, and I don't die. I'm badass. Yeah, that's it. You know? So, um, don't don't let little. F- I mean, I mean, we're getting away from free will and getting into some health self help stuff here, but. I mean, at the end Boring. of the day, I mean, <laughs> let's just quickly wrap it up. Yeah, but yeah. I think the best way to look at it is, okay, free will, not having free will is depressing. You're like, I'm not in control of my own destiny. I'm pretty okay with it, honestly. Oh, yeah, you are. But but then you've got something to get around for. You know, you go, okay, I'm not in control of my own destiny, but the chances of me being here small, so let's not give in the petty fear and kick some ass. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I've only got a small decision-making process. I'm going to make the most freaking awesome decision-making. Decisions I've ever made in my life. I, I'm going to not take the safe, easy path. I'm going to take the slightly harder path. Yeah, and be, and Always be as best I can. So when this random turn left, turn right, go forward, you go. Actually, I'm I need to get angel. to this place across the street. So I'm just going to turn right. Yeah. So you know. So what I've to driven do. around here before. Yeah. And it's a hard <laughs> street to get get by. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of a lot of left turn only, but. You know but, but f the police. <laughs> <laughs> f the police of decision making processes in life. That's it. Anyway, I think we've covered the uh, subject pretty well. You got anything else that you want to quickly add? Yeah, seriously, guys. If you got, if you want us to clarify anything more, put a comment in. I mean, this is a bit of a naughty, naughty thing to cover. I mean, we've made it a bit humorous as much as we can. But if you want us to go over it in more detail and to clarify it a bit, the comment or some materials that clarify it, just send us a comment. Seriously, just stick a comment down at the bottom, and we'll give you a clarification. Easy peasy. I think it's uh, time to sign off, Scott. That sounds good to me, Well, All right. I'll see you guys uh, next week, and we're going to be talking a little bit about chaos theory and time. That's going to take a lot more. We are going to add it in here, but we wanted to save some time. Yeah, three three naughty areas in one recording is going to get a bit garbled, so we'll keep it as much as we yeah. can. Too. So I'll see you guys next week for that. Until then, um, I'm Will. I'm Scott. And I'll see you guys later. Take care.